What are you writing? Story of revenge. Am I in it? The cafeteria would be the place. Two Colt 45s would be the tools. The captain of the hockey team would be the first target. If you go near my girlfriend again, I'll kill you. It would be methodical. It would be unemotional. I was angry. I wrote things down. Stupid, not dangerous. Okay, um, we're sitting down with Jason Buxton, the director of Blackbird. The film had its world premiere at this year's Toronto International Film Festival and has made it stop at the Festival de Nouveau Cinema, and we're very grateful to sit down and talk with him about his new film. Uh, Jason, the, the first thing I wanted to ask about is what elements of the film are autobiographical? Well, I think um, it's impossible not for you know not to write something that is in many ways autobiographical and I wouldn't say just Sean the the main character I think you know I bring elements of myself to all of my characters and but Sean in particular um, I mean I didn't dress uh, goth I didn't express myself that way I was very sort of you know I didn't stand out like Sean does in the film but you know, he's, he's a reactive individual. He's also kind of withdrawn and a bit of a provocateur. So I would say that I have those elements. And, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of me in Sean. Again, drawing on my, my own experience. Um, sorry, I'm thinking of the actor's name, Michael. But uh, Ricky Randall, uh, Sean's dad. Um, certainly has you know a similar kind of energy to my dad so when I was writing that character I was drawing from the type of person he he is and uh, yeah so yeah certainly it informs I was I was a sports guy I mean I, I fit in it was you know I said this in another interview I had a rather unremarkable uh, teenagehood um, but I think you know even as an adult I think being a creative person, growing up in a small town, perhaps, you know, and I certainly, uh, you know, had my, you know, came up against um, bullies. I, I was from England, and when I came to Canada, I was nine years old, and I spoke with a thick British accent and really, really fast, and so I, I certainly stood out, in, you know, as a, as a child coming to Canada. And you quickly adapt, and so. But I think those sort of influences are there, and also feeling, I think, misunderstood like Sean is something that resonates for me. You know, not just in high school, but throughout my life. Did it take a long time to find your Sean in a way? Because I imagine, I mean, that's the lead of the film he's in. But I think almost every scene in the film has him in it, so that must have been a very difficult search. I imagine. It was. Yeah, we we uh, went about casting uh, sort of in two separate times one was what what I guess is called pre-casting and it's when we were packaging packaging the film and trying to get the uh, financing in place uh, part of that is attaching names at that point and so we looked a year before production through a Toronto casting agent and the Toronto casting agent were uh, you know they send the breakdown to the various agents and what tends to happen is you get people much older than than what you're looking for especially at that age the breakdown was for 16 year olds and we we're looking at you know people that were averaging the, in their mid-20s it's what I call the Beverly Hills 90210 casting yeah. <laughs> and so we didn't see that many uh, I think the youngest we saw at that point was 18 and so when we when we got the funding and we went back and did it again I just had to be you know adamant about I want 16-year-olds to try out for this movie, and that it was then that we saw Connor Jessup, and immediately, you know, he was really the only choice. Yeah, there's actually a prison, uh, a youth detention facility in Nova Scotia, that's in the town of Waterville, um, and so prisons typically are named after, they're nicknamed after the the location that they exist, and so we were able to use Waterville because it isn't actually the name of the prison, but I loved, you know, it sounded like a place that you go to vacation or something. I loved that sort of irony of that. Did you talk to any uh, inmates too, maybe, as research? I did, yeah. Yeah, I talked to, to many uh, youth 
most of them over 18 who had either spent time at a youth detention facility or adult prison. So I got to know a number of them and, you know, uh, a lot of the stuff in the film, you know, comes out of that research. How difficult is it to get a film made in Canada nowadays? Well, it's becoming more difficult, I think. When we got the funding for Blackbird, which is almost two years ago now, there was, uh, you know, a fairly healthy disbursement of telefilm funds to the regions. And that's sort of up in the air right now. I think a lot of us are, you know, are concerned that that money is being pulled from the regions. Uh, and that money was, is primarily, I mean, that money is designed for emerging filmmakers. So people that are making their first, second, third films, that money is designed for in the various regions in Canada. So. I would say, and I suspect in comparison to a lot of different countries in the world, Canada, up until what, you know, the changes that may be happening now, is, is, a, you know, is a great place to get financing and to really focus your energies on, you know, telling a, you know, a personal, making personal films and telling stories like that. But I think it's getting harder. Just, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, just to end off here, uh, are you working on anything right now? Any new scripts? Or? Um, yeah, loosely it's starting uh, a new project in early days and trying to get the rights to a book, which I won't mention because we're, yeah. we're in negotiations right now. Yeah. Okay, thank you for sitting here. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah, my pleasure. What do you say we put an end to all this? Doesn't anybody care about the